Review for Chapter 1. The main pieces or information that you're going to need to know out of Chapter 1 really has to do with the hypothesis. You will need to identify them from a given situation, and there are two like this. For example, the situation in this problem is SK Electronics need to produce this electronic component, and the component must not be greater than 16 millimeters. So right now, I am assuming status quo that my machine is making the length, and I'm going to put equal to 16. If it wasn't, my machine shouldn't be running. So I, as a researcher, I'm going to go in and say, hmm, I think maybe the machine is making them longer after taking a sample. So my hypothesis, the researcher, is that the length is greater than 16. So what we need to do is go get a bunch of evidence. So we go get the evidence, and that evidence is the data that comes from a sample. We measure the sample, and the data was found to be statistically significant. This is a phrase that's very important that comes up in a lot of reading of statistical studies. And statistical significant means the data was significant. It was significant enough from what I believe. So if it's different statistically, we're going to say that we will reject the null. So what does that say about my data? What was the direction of the test? That my links were on the right. They were larger. So if this is 16, I know I'll get some around 16, but statistically significant mean I'd get a whole bunch on the right. So that's what I'm testing when I test these hypotheses by gathering my evidence. So what hypothesis was supported? doesn't necessarily make it absolute true, because remember, I just took a sample. So the hypothesis that was supported was my alternative, because I rejected the null. Type of error. Again, you're going to have several types of errors that you need to identify. And there are two types, type 1 and type 2. In this scenario, when you reject the null, you have the possibility of making an error. A making an error here would be, uh-oh, I rejected the null, but it should have been true. So that is a type 1 error. So again, I, my data supported my alternative, so I rejected the null. But remember, your data came from a sample. It's not 100% accurate. You're always going to take that risk of making an error, I rejected the null. The type of error I could have made is that the null was really true. My sample was just off, and it happened to be much larger. So if this was occurring, if I rejected the null, if the length was larger, I would shut down my machine, and I'd recalibrate it. Now, what's the consequence of that? Well, I lost time and money. But what if I had done a type 2 error? That would have been keeping my machine on, but all my little links here of my wiring would have been too long. So then I would have had these too long links. Again, I would have had to sh eventually shut off my machine. I would have lost time and money because I would have to go remake those. So again, in Chapter 1, the null and the alternative hypothesis you will have to identify from a given situation. When you identify these, you're going to want to use mathematical symbols. I always keep the equal sign status quo. And then my alternative is going to be shorter than, longer than, or I'm not sure. Could be longer or shorter. This would be a two-sided test. I would be looking on both sides of 16. This, like we said, was a right-sided test. I was only looking at the larger. And this is a left-sided test. I was only looking at the less than 16 or the left. So that will conclude this lecture for Chapter 1 review.